So what's all this about then? Sailing single-handed from the Solent to Suffolk in March? Doing this over a three-day window was a bit hit and miss, I suppose, but it looked like I was going to strike lucky, at least after the Force 9 southwesterly had blown through anyway. Beggars can't be choosers though if you're sailing in this part of the world. You'll have seen in my last episode that I purchased a Nicholson 32 named Stowaway. She had been stood in the yard for a good couple of years and needed a bit of work doing, painting mainly. Most of the pre-launch jobs were completed over a frantic four day weekend. It was late notice but credit to Stowaway's previous owner had managed to arrange a launch with the boatyard for the end of March. So this is the luxury bit, sitting on the train to London then Brockenhurst, the closest point for getting to Buckler's Hard, located in the middle of the New Forest, surrounded by free roaming animals and seamlessly endless fields and forests. A glimpse of maybe what the country would have looked like 500 years ago, wild and mostly undisturbed. Six hours after leaving Norwich, I am now at Buckler's Heart. Just got the taxi up here, picked up some supplies from Brock and Hertz beforehand. That should be good. Hopefully the boat is in the water, floating next to the visitors pontoon for me to get on board and prep the boat. Um, it's a lovely day down here, um, but there is this uh, low pressure system uh, just coming in. Or oh, it's just off the west coast of Ireland at the minute. Um, and uh, well, the southeast part of that is actually coming up the English Channel tomorrow, so I'm not going to be able to get anywhere um, until probably about Friday when it eases off to a force five and six. It's still going to be quite lively, um, but it's like an easing forecast after that. Uh, in the meantime, just get this sails and uh, prep the boat. Oh, here she is. Float after nearly two years on the hard. And uh, as you can see, quite a bit of work today. Let me start on some anti slip. <laughs> or just a scrubbing brush. Uh, first job, I think, is to get the engine running. Um, I've just booked in a second night on the pontoon here. And uh, yeah, just need to get the sails on and all that stuff. And the diesel filter, look, it's okay. A little bit of water at the bottom, maybe. Uh, Don't think that's been drained out for a while. So it's 20 seconds to fill up that bucket, which is about 5 litres. And um, yeah, I've just got a start time for when I put the hose into the tank. So. Let's see how long it takes. Going in there quite nicely. Some serious gusts going on there. Just been listening to Channel 16 this morning, um, and there was um, there was a mayday that went out um, about an hour ago for a boat which had. Uh, lost its mast just off the um, I think it was just off uh, the needles um, southbound uh, not a particularly good situation that Buckler's Hard originally called Montague Town was built by the second Duke of Montague and was intended to be a free port for trade with the West Indies its geography also favoured the development of shipbuilding as the hamlet possessed access to a sheltered but navigable waterway with gravel banks capable of supporting slipways for vessel construction and launch. Timber for the hulls was also readily available from the surrounding New Forest. Shipbuilding at Buckler's Hard commenced in the early 18th century. A private shipyard adjoining the hamlet was established by James Wyatt, a local entrepreneur and timber merchant. Wyatt and Co. won a contract to build the Navy ship HMS Surprise in 1744 and subsequently another HMS Scorpion at Buckler's Hard. So it says here to look at the sundial and do some fancy calculation to figure out what time it was. But the only problem is I need a bit of sun. After the completion of the initial ships, Buckler's Hard grew to national fame under Henry Adams and won a number of Royal Navy contracts. 
Over the following 60 years, Adams would supervise the building of 43 Royal Navy ships at Buckler's Hard, including three that fought at the Battle of Trafalgar in 1805. HMS Euralius, HMS Swiftsure and HMS Agamemnon were all constructed at Buckler's Hard. During World War II, the village was used to build motor torpedo boats and the river was a base for hundreds of landing craft for the Normandy invasion, Operation Overlord. This is the Shipwright Workshop, which was reconstructed in 2014 uh, by hand using materials from the local estate. Really impressive. Went for a walk around a little while ago, uh, around um, Butler's Hard, and um, yeah, it's all very nice. I just uh, took some of these new offshore trousers and top from Gill out of the bag. Um, fantastic bits of uh, fantastic clothing. This honestly, it's so light, really, really nice. And um, I did put this on at home, um, and uh, yeah, the quality is excellent. It's um, it feels lighter than my old set, and um, almost definitely more waterproof. I think, <laughs> but the old stuff did do really well. Probably getting on for about 10 years old by um, by the time I changed out, so yeah, it did really well. I'm just prepping for my departure, um, which will be imminently in the next hour. So um, I'm just sorting a few things out, uh, getting my um, getting my uh, deck line sorted, my safety lines, and um, just trying to sort the boat out a little bit better. I wouldn't mind because I'm struggling with space for putting that and I need to keep that free in case I need to get to the anchor chain because it does get jammed up sometimes you have to lift all the bunks up to get to it it's a bit of a pain but um, yeah I wouldn't mind some ties just to keep that on board but we'll see how um, how much of a lean on we do if we do lean it'll be on that side anyway so that's the, uh, that's the low side um, I'll turn the gas off so departure was going to take a little bit of uh, thought really um, both the wind and the tide um, sort of dragging me sending the boat further down the pontoon right onto a recently launched shiny sailing boat so I had a bit of space to aft so I brought the boat further back um, with the intention that the uh, the wind would actually shift the bow out it was just it was just coming off the, off the pontoon a little bit so with a stern liner fixed um, and some help from a couple of by bystanders, they uh, <laughs> gave me a hand to to free the midship line uh, with me on board, um, and then we we keep the, the the line astern fixed and just let the wind do its thing with the bow. And when we were happy, it was boat was facing the direction of where I wanted to go. We'd slip the stern line and off we'd go. Any issue I had was uh, the Hebridean system got quite close to a, a junction box as the, as the stern rounded. Um, so we just needed to slip the stern line a little bit just to give a bit of space and uh, some throttle. And then we were we were good to go. You can still you can still see the gusts across the water there. And my main concern was that I wouldn't get a turn. Um, sharp enough to to get out of that area as you can see there on the the other side of the stream there's there's a couple of motorboats quite expensive motorboats that rib on the back of that motorboat is probably worth more than <laughs> than stowaway itself so i was keen not to sm end up on that side um it'd be quite difficult to get away from there if i if i ended up against those boats so but no I made the turn fine and um made out through the river quite easy to see as I was heading out how popular this place gets during the summer extremely well protected and lovely surroundings there's also a very sufficient amount of depth in the river as well I noticed even at low tide so the pilotage for the Bewley River states so when you're passing this point uh, when you're alongside this house here, uh, you've now got the same amount of depth as you would have at the 
bar the entrance to the river. So we had 4.9 metres there, which was fine, and we were on a rising tide as well. Okay, so far so good. Uh, it's pretty gusty, to be honest. Um, speed, good gusts up to about 22, uh, 27. Okay, yeah. Uh, just picked up a mooring boy. Uh, just at the corner before the um, straight section onto um, coming up to the main sort of entrance if you like uh, just to get the fenders in and stuff because um, I couldn't uh, I couldn't really risk it with this wind blowing as it was and um, yeah the autopilot wasn't really uh, obviously couldn't cope with the gusts as they were coming through so the, the, the bow was just like spinning up into wind um, and of course the boat was just then coming off course and doing all sorts of mad things so I picked up a mooring boy uh, after a couple of attempts it wasn't easy um, and then um, yeah I've just got all the fenders in and I've actually set up the, the Hebridean rudder as well so but you see some there's quite a few boats going out and then for they're getting blown around all over the place in the main channels so here's us underway um, I'm not gonna talk over what's going on you can just watch what happens as I make my way out um, bearing in mind we're on a lee shore um, currently under the protection of the shingle bank but that'll soon change. Wind speeds were Three, about 22, 4. 23 2 gusting 30 knots uh, and uh, increased a little bit as we uh, made out into the solar. Do you not want all of that to know her out? We're just going to control her a little bit. Steve's off on the power a little bit. So I've got the engine just uh, Make her off. running in standby, um, but to be fair it could have come off, we're coming out there at about six knots <laughs> uh, with the wind behind us and with the sail out. See at the end of this straight channel so you've got like a channel. almost a 90 degree bend um, to head out into the Solon, which can catch you out if you're, if you're not paying attention. <laughs> It does so get shallow on either side, but the channel is really well marked. Come out of here very quick. Just up ahead, but we've got plenty of water. We're nearly at high tide. <laughs> we've got a ship just coming up here. It's worth keeping an eye on him. Oh, what a beautiful day it is out here. Windy girl. Okay. Time to 
want to get out of here. Okay, that's enough for an hour. We're just passing sort of a uh, ride and uh, hugging the sort of north shore of the Isle of Wight. It's uh, been through quite a lot of traffic actually, it's surprising. Um, we had a racing fleet and got caught right into that. Uh, that was quite fun, I had to give, uh, give way to a couple of them. It wasn't easy for just a jib up actually. And all the forts over there just um i can't remember the names of them um but yeah uh, just started getting a little bit of swell around the back of the isle of wight now uh from from all that weather yesterday but yeah it's um doing really well i tried to put the main up a little while ago but then the breeze kicked back up and we we're doing six and a half knots like under just the genoa so i thought what's the point um i will have to put it up later on because it is it is reducing you can feel like the wind gusts are reducing all the time but like we've got 24 25 knots now that's probably the biggest gust i've seen in about half an hour so going along nicely Just going out to the Boulder Channel, around Selsey Bill, it's about half past four now. Um, still got a really good boat speed of about five knots um, and about six, somehow I've got about five and a half. I've got, I've got more ground speed than I have boat speed, which doesn't quite make sense because the tide should still be coming against me, but maybe there's some sort of back eddy, I don't know. But the Boulder Channel is uh, slack water at six, so um, going through there at not such a bad pace to be fair um, this, the wave height is um, is quite it's quite normal really and quite as, as I expected really considering it was a force 9 out here yesterday um, I've just made myself a brute and I'm um, just admiring the sort of last part of the Solent before we um, we head east So I've just come through Selsey Bill, or oh, through the Boulder Channel around Selsey Bill even. That's Selsey Bill over there. And uh, kind of, that's us officially leaving the, um, the Solent now. And heading east. Uh, the wind has held up quite nicely. It's 
gull doing about five knots through the water, which is great. And uh, yeah, I could just make out Shoreham over there, Brighton. Excellent. Last time I was coming through here, I was um, I was going around Britain in uh, my Hurley 22 Katrina, and um, that was uh, what was that? It must have been early June last year. Sorry, um, yeah, June, June last year. Not as much wind as today. This would have been perfect. And I had engine trouble instead. <laughs> so there you go. This is fantastic. The tide is about to change to go with me, which is brilliant. If this wind holds up, I'll probably end up doing something like seven or eight knots over ground, which will be fantastic. Hebrideans back in the action again. Uh, that bracket, I'm so pleased with that bracket, it's amazing. Uh, well, finally after a bit of messing around, I've got it to work, I think. Um, it is pulling the tiller slightly up in the air, a bit weird like. Yeah, it's holding us on course. Um, there's a wind farm just off the coast of Shoreham. And I think uh, I'm going to head round to the north because as the wind decreases um, I'll have to cut back in. If I go round the south and then I veer towards um, or head towards Beachy Head I'll actually t change my tack to the wind so I'll, I'll start to lose it. So it's a bit of a tactical manoeuvre uh, based on the conditions of the weather forecast. So just to give you an overview, uh, we left um, the Beaulieu River today at 12 and uh, head out through the uh, east part of the Solent and um, just down here past the forts or no man's land fort and then cut across the shipping lane here and across to what is Celsi Bill and that's just on the other chart, there goes my pencil. Just trying to make some way around a cardinal and the wind direction is sort of wind speed's diminished quite a bit. Um, and so yeah, we're just approaching, uh, we've come through the, um, this is Celsi Bill, this is the east side of um, basically what isn't on that chart here. So essentially, we've come across the channel, crossed, and now we're through the boulder channel, like they call that boulder, and the Celsi Bill here. Um, we've got Bognor Regis here, and Shoreham, is that Shoreham? No, it's not, it's Littlehampton. Uh, Worthing, Shoreham, and then Brighton, and Brighton Marina. Um, so we are currently here, bang, 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 and um, they're heading across this. Um, bay now this is a bit of an old chart to be honest um, and they have recently um, put up a new wind farm um, which uh, is the, in the centre here um, so I'm going to cut across to the north of it and then um, across again to um, to Beachy Head so yeah uh, a little bit of a tricky one because on this tack currently there's not a huge amount of wind um, it's sort of coming off our quarter um, and uh, it has dropped quite a bit.
So probably about an half an hour away from uh, from darkness now. Um, we're just uh, trundling along quite nicely actually, about sort of three and a half knots. It's probably the best we're doing at the minute on this tack until we sort of abeam this wind farm ahead of us, and then uh, well we can start heading a bit more sort of east. Uh, southeast really and then um, about 110, 110 degrees gives us a good approach to beachy head and i've got some chili hong honey on the go and it's burnt to the bottom of the pan damn it they're actually two days old now this chili um i had some last night that's fine it's been down there in that locker which is freezing by the way so um, yeah, I like a good cold locker to put stuff. It's actually colder in there than it is in that cool box. Um, so yeah, it's always best to have your perishables um, as um, underwater in that the way as possible. Actually, what would be better is if I had that in there because it would stay cold all day long. Right, turn that off now. That's enough. I'll leave that to chill out a bit. Oh, it's going to be an amazing night. If it stays clear like this, I'm going to have the best show of stars going. Coming around Beachy Head, that's, that's not very populated. That is, there's not much in the way of um, light pollution. There's a star up there. That's pretty smart. So the good news is, I've just still got my light on. Oh, whatever. So the good news is, we're doing really well. Um, we're just approaching the um, uh, sort of Shoreham Brighton wind farm offshore. The bad news is, um, I've just found out that I've run out of gas. Um, I thought I had loads and I, 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 shook, I shook the um, the bottle and it felt like I had loads, but uh, So it looks like I'm just gonna be eating cold stuff, um, which I've got plenty of. And um, I've got plenty of drink and what have you. It's just not gonna be hot. So yeah, that is the scenario at the minute. Um, bit of a shame, because I do like hot drink while I'm doing night shifts night shifts night passages um, so yeah that's that so I've just had a small fishing um, vessel go past me set my AAS alarm off I've actually uh, recently installed this AAS CB unit it's quite um, it's quite a good little unit actually you can buy them on eBay uh, it's called a Quark, I think it is, um, receiver, and uh, you can um, function it up with like your chart plotter as well. It's got the um, NMEA output and input for other stuff as well. Um, you will need a VHS splitter, but for both of these units, it was less than 200 quid. So instead of having to upgrade um, or have like a VHF, which has got like integrated. Oh yes, mm. you can set this up separately and switch them on and off as and when. And you can also switch the VHF off if you've got a handheld and you don't want to use the power off the main set. Um, you can fire this on and then use it as you know your AAS module on its own. So it's kind of a bit of redundancy there. Mm. Uh, on Navionics, you can set up the um, the um, alarm ranges and all the rest of it just the same as you would on any normal AAS set. Just that you get. Um, it's a lot. It's a lot more kind of user friendly, if you like. You've got one coming out from New Haven, by the looks of it. Uh, it's still doing extremely well. We're going to make Beachy Head in uh, in no time at all. Yeah, Seven Sisters. This looks like it's just come out underway using engine. I think it's one of the fast ones. I'm not sure. Yeah, it is. It's a ferry between New Haven and 
um, chip, and uh, that will speed up as it gets further out. So we'll just keep an eye on him. So about half five on Saturday morning, um, the wind had dropped at uh, the early hours, and um, yeah, we're going along at about half a knot at the minute. Um, and uh, the tide is about to, well, it's just it's changed, and it's still uh, it's still increasing in strength. So uh, I think I'm gonna just pop the motor on for a little while, um, just to give us some a little bit of way. They still forecast this um, easterly coming in um, mid afternoon, so I hope to be well. I hope to be getting sort of around uh, the Kent coast by then, so yeah, um, we'll see how that goes. Well, I got pretty cold last night, uh, so yeah, uh, I think it was about 5 degrees this morning. <laughs> I've got no gas at all. Maybe I'll just try cold coffee. Maybe I'll put it on top of the engine and see if it warms it up. Just approaching Dungeon S Point. Uh, it's about eight o'clock now. Um, and the tide's against us for well, another four hours, I think. Well, the midpoint is... Uh, half nine, 10 o'clock before uh, it starts to ease off. But what I'm doing is I'm actually cutting in slightly inland of the spit and then heading out and round it and I'm gonna cut as close as I can to it because further out is gonna be pretty strong going westbound tide. So yeah. I'm still doing about four knots, which is pretty good against this tide. Um, and that might have something to do with the fact I'm snuck in behind the actual bank. Where most of the tidal stream is slightly further out. So that's me, just been intercepted by Border Force. Just wanted to know where I was coming from and where I was going. Really friendly, nice to have a chat. Just coming into um, migrant territory now. Uh, there's quite a lot of, um, they come across in quite a few small boats around here and run up the coast here at Folkestone and Dover. So Border Force are everywhere. They're probably gonna go and have a look at this yacht. There's another yacht just over here. Um, and just, uh, yeah, ask a few questions like they did just me then. And on a day like today, I expect there'll be quite a few little boats coming over. There we go, slightly bigger border force vessel this time. Again, asking me questions where I've come from, where I'm going. I'm getting really hot on, uh, on any vessel coming through these waters now. For good reason. Lots and lots of shipping traffic. There's one in at the minute. Oh no, sorry, there's two. And um, they come out of here pretty quick, to be honest. So just approaching, just approaching Ramsgate. Um, and that is via the Sandwich Channel to the west. 
Uh, the reason why I've come up this way is because I'm actually going to be dropping or planning to drop anchor uh, at the anchorage just outside the port. So, um, so yeah, I'll probably just get my head down for uh, maybe two or three hours and then uh, and then carry on. Um, if I stay any longer, I might just call in to um, to pick up some more, uh, like a refill of gas, because I've, I've completely run out. I've shaken the bottle like loads and it's not doing anything. So yeah, um, that is the plan at the minute. Um, the wind seems a little strong and just interesting to see what the anchorage is actually going to be like. Um, if it's not favourable then I'll probably just press on and um, start making my way across the Thames Estuary um, for this evening. I've still got the tide with me so yeah, um, it is a win in either aspect really. Hey, so here we are, just anchored off Ramsgate Port. Um, I didn't want to get too close to the breakwater um, because the tide was just pulling me right over the top of it. So uh, I decided to come this side of, there's a sub submersed cable that runs along sort of like the outside part of the uh, harbour or outside harbour anchorage. Um, so I've just come outside of that and uh, actually now the anchor is set it's actually quite quite nice it's sort of just sort of beam on to a bit of swell from the the south um, it's sort of just peaked to up to sort of like 14 knots which isn't too bad um, anchors held well which seems seems okay um, yeah it's just quite pleasant really just watching all the traffic going into the into the port and listening to them on the radio because I'm a nosy bugger so I'm going to uh, get some sleep uh, the intention is to leave later on um, and get this wind which is um, picking up sort of nicely from the east uh, later on so hopefully um, make good sort of night passage of the Thames and uh, get in early hours up the or well the early hours in the morning But you know, when it's uh, calmed down, it's actually a really nice little anchorage. This I'm really pleased it came here now. So I've had about uh, an hour and a half sleep. Um, I've got no gas on board, and I've got nothing to heat anything up. And uh, after. Well, I think I found out, out about, must have been about 18 hours ago. It's really starting to um, kick in a bit, to be honest. Um, not having any coffee or warm food or anything like that. I, I really can't be bothered to go in um, right now um, for the sake of like two or three hours just to get a bottle of gas. So I'm just going to crack on and um, continue. I think we've got uh, winds uh, sort of picking up throughout the sort of morning um, gusting up to sort of 12 to 13 and then throughout the day then it's uh, something in the that is tomorrow something in the region of about um, anywhere up to 27 um, knots so yeah tomorrow is going to be quite a breezy day by all accounts I'm going to get myself ready and, um, and head off across the Thames estuary here we go last bit Okay, Put my life jacket on. Wow, what a lovely evening! Fantastic. <laughs> now well, I'm about to set off on another trip. Oh, you see, the tide's just about there now. Got trackers on. 
Let's get the engine going. Okay, so uh, we're about half an hour from uh, the London Array wind farm, which is the uh, biggest wind farm uh, in the Thames estuary. Um, there is a small navigable channel to go through it, so I'm just sort of lining up to enter through the south part and then uh, headway through the um, through the channel. It will probably take in about with our current speed about an hour um, to go through them but there's a very specific kind of channel um, to head around so I'm gonna have to be on the helm for it it's actually really really cold tonight it's a lot colder tonight than it was the first night um, and I think it's because the wind is from the east um, and yeah it's very cold wind has got up to about 10 to 15 knots so we're doing really well against the tide we're doing about five knots which is um which is definitely not what i planned at all so that's really good it means um we're making better progress and then when it comes to the change of the tide when we're with it we should be able to easily do about sort of seven knots over ground which would be perfect for getting us um over to the suffolk coast side just keeping an eye on some of the traffic there's a lot of traffic moving around at the minute um there's a couple of vessels uh, sand moving there's, there's a lot of vessels which are picking up um like dredging sand from the bottom and then they come and they transfer it across the thames estuary move it move it to other areas so you really have to keep an eye out for them because they do not care <laughs> well i'm sure they do but it just seems like they don't just kind of fly in out of nowhere so yeah That's us leaving the London Array wind farm. That's the safe water boy. And all this lot. She's finally got through. The tide's been really strong. Uh, so we've had a cross tide all the way through the channel. And um, yeah, it's been quite challenging to sort of work out where you are in relation to the other turbines but if you follow the safe water boys if they sort of line up and you can see right down which channel you're supposed to go to but the wind has been quite fickle I can't can't show you that the sail but the wind farm's acting as a bit of a buffer and um, we've, we've sort of lost the wind or the wind's changing direction quite a bit so it's a little bit of a pain um, but hopefully that will uh, pick back up to sort of its original strength to about 10 or 15 and then we can carry on. Okay, if you're going up to five o'clock in the morning, just entering the Orwell, and it's actually quite damp, and I think we've got some fog further up. So uh, I've taken the main down, just as a precautionary measure, 
uh, being single-handed don't really want to be up there taking sails down in the dark and in reduced visibility so let's see how we get on in pin mill so that crossing was uh, we left at six o'clock and we got in at um, well it was about half five I think and picked up the Warren boy uh, total trip I think one 168 miles I think um, from leaving with Bewley to here um, so it's approximately um, 39 hours from the beauty to Ramsgate and then um, and then the last 11 hours from Ramsgate to the Orwell okay thanks for watching this video uh, I hope you enjoyed it um I uh, I'm gonna get my head down now because I'm pretty tired. Um, yeah, if you like this video, um, please give us a like and um, and subscribe if you haven't done so already. We've got some more, uh, well, more content coming up soon. And on this boat, definitely with regard to sort of painting and things like that, that's, I'm gonna probably try and do that sort of as and when while she's out of the water, just do the decks and stuff like that. The big job is gonna be the hull um, painting, which is gonna be going on um, obviously when she comes out of the water so uh, yeah there'll be a, a couple of uh, episodes on that no doubt um, from sort of taking it all off and uh, putting the new paint on and all that good stuff so yeah um, thanks for watching again and uh, yeah look forward to more videos coming up soon cheers